One, two, three, four. It's all a matter of perception. Where we stand in space and time. There is no you or me that I can see. Only the illusions of the mind. Hello there, and welcome back to Soul Perspectives. I am Kip. And I'm Evan. And today is an exciting day in our lives on Soul Perspectives, because we're going to talk about... Conscious evolution. Have we got some perspectives on that? Oh, boy. Just the perspectives on perspectives on perspectives on what conscious evolution is, what it means to consciously evolve, what it means for us as a, collectively as a species if we consciously evolve. What we haven't been doing till now that wasn't quite so <laughs> mm, Good point. And this word conscious being right there staring us in the face is so beautiful and such a great starting point because if we are living unconsciously, if we are operating on autopilot from the subconscious mind, driving our, driving our proverbial bus, then we're not doing things consciously. We certainly couldn't be evolving consciously. And likewise, when we do put our attention into this process of evolving ourselves, our consciousness, our tribe, and our world, then we know we're on the path of conscious evolution. As we discussed with so many of the attendees at the Earth Day San Francisco Festival, where we made our signs of conscious evolution video that if we are making a conscious effort and choice to do things differently to rethink everything we think to be open that lifestyles might change radically in order for us to honor a higher value system and evolve towards a more thriving species then we are on that path and, and, and all of those things that you touched on right now are things that we haven't been doing as part of, of, as part of the modern story of human civilization. Um, and in large part, I feel that that stems from the story of materialism and how that has led us to believe we are separate from nature, from the universe that we're a part of. I think though it wasn't defined as conscious evolution in some indigenous peoples, there was a more conscious way of existing with the world around you just strictly because of the time you spend observing nature and life the universe how do you think they figured out how the stars were moving the mayas and the incas and everyone figured this out that's part of conscious evolution most people do not take the time to observe the world around them anymore and we're coming back to this connection um with nature with life with the universe and i think this is all part of what the conscious evolution process is. It's certainly something that we do together, our human family. And I'll use this segue to introduce Barbara's book, uh, Conscious Evolution by Barbara Marks Hubbard. The book was written originally in 1998. And so here we are 30 plus years on and uh, Barbara mm -hmm. did pass mm -hmm. away last year in 2018. Um, Love you, Barbara. But her legacy, her book, her gift to us, and her many books remain. And her personal expansion of the term conscious evolution, awakening the power of our social potential. And let me just give her basic explanation, definition. Conscious evolution is occurring now because we are gaining an understanding of the process of nature, the gene, the atom, brain, the origin of the universe. We are now changing our understanding of how nature evolves. We are moving from unconscious evolution through natural selection to conscious evolution by choice. With this increased knowledge and the power that it gives us, we can destroy the world or we can participate in a future of immeasurable dimensions. Consciousness has evolved for billions of years from single cells to animals to humans. But conscious evolution is radically new. And she talks about 
how the atom bomb in 1945 showed us the the danger, the the risks of our power, of our technology, of what we are uh, creating here, <laughs> and uh, whether it's destructive or creative and nurturing to life. And so she also carries that through the 60s and the counterculture and how people were awakening to the the forces that we now have these these catastrophic forces that we have at our hands and that we recognize this more instinctive more tribal more native wisdom of a recognition of our place in nature with nature and that the counterculture was awakening to how far we had gone astray from our natural state and that how some of the things we were developing, the chemicals for warfare, the chemicals for pesticides, the chemicals for pharmaceuticals that we're putting in our body were not, they were so far removed from nature and our natural state. They weren't consistent with what their hearts told them would help them thrive. The simple nature of being the animal primate that we are. <laughs> it's so important as a connection we share with everything and as a part of the conscious evolution, because what we've excluded ourselves from, as we've told the story of separation and control and fear and ego, um, all the underpinnings of modern human civilization, we've lost our connection to all of the intelligence that we're a part of, the intelligence of the universe itself. We're now beginning to open ourselves up to the 13 billion year old universe and all of the information that is literally floating around that we've closed ourselves off from. We've made whether it's enlightenment, awakening, whatever you want to call it, we've made these things seem really complicated sometimes, and they're not. As Barbara points out, this is natural. We've been doing it all along. Now we're calling it something because we want to consciously do it, but it's it's not difficult. Um, this these, The process of conscious evolution that we've been experiencing all the time, we just haven't been aware of it. Um, you, I know you're a big fan of Fred, Fred, uh, Dr. Sorry, not Dr. Frederick Tim's book, Field Guide for a New Humanity, and he sort of outlines some of this process of conscious evolution we're going through and the different stages of that. Yeah, well, we'll segue to Fred's book. Um, in 2016, Frederick Tim wrote Field Guide to a New Species, A New Sustainable Way to Be Human. And I felt it was one of the most important books for any of us to read. And I was so struck by it. It had such a profound impact on me. And I felt that it was so important and yet didn't have an audiobook available for it. I like to listen to audiobooks that I can just hear over and over and really learn and absorb and understand and be able to implement what I've learned from from a book. And so I had this wild idea, these important books to me that didn't have audiobooks available for all those people who, who listen to audiobooks rather than read uh, for many different reasons. And both of these books actually, Conscious Evolution and Field Guide to a New Species, did not have audiobooks available. So I approached Fred Tim and uh, I sent him samples. <laughs> I said, here's how I could read your book. And uh, he agreed. And so I've done the audiobook narration for Field Guide to a New Species. It's available on, on the usual audiobook channels, and I'll give you his introduction here to the field guide and to the new species about which he's writing. In this field guide, the two species identified are both human and share a habitat, our planet home, Earth. The species are Homo sapiens, which have been around for the last 70,000 years or so, and Homo veritas, which are just evolving into being. This guide identifies two intermediate types of humans as well, rebels and seekers, both of which are also described in detail, each in a different place along the evolutionary path to consciousness. This guide investigates how trauma and truth affect the behavior and attitudes of these four types throughout a maturational process. So it's a beautifully put together book. It is it is concise, and he lays out what he's talking about the evolution, what these four stages of evolution look like, what defines them, and then he just goes into a whole myriad of topics from childhood issues to parenting to how we live and consume and shop and how we die and how we face death and look at death and 
all different facets of those and how each of the four stages of an evolved human looks at those different situations. And it's a great, it's a guide, but it's also a great template and a um, sort of a measuring tool that we can see, okay, where do I fall in any one of these categories? I'd love for Fred to do so many more of these books and cover so many more facets of our lives because our culture is so multifaceted and our lives are so complex and nuanced. And every area of engagement with life is an opportunity to take another look, gain deeper understandings, understand ourselves, what's in our heart, what our actual true needs are, and how we can get them met and be confident we'll continue to get them met so we can approach life ready to go, healthy and able to do our part and make the contribution that we're here to make. You know what really strikes me as we're talking about this? Whether it's Barbara or Frederick or Bruce Lipton, they're all sharing a lot of similar information. They're all talking about conscious evolution in one form or another. And I realize it's so important to have all these different voices out there sharing because my voice isn't going to resonate with somebody the same way yours is, the way you might con construct a phrase or the pictures that your words might uh, um, paint for people are going to be different than mine might. So all these different voices are out there. And I really come, keep coming back to Elizabeth Satoris and Barbara and the whole butterfly metaphor, caterpillar to butterfly, and how we go through the imaginal cell stage. We're all these imaginal cells helping each other imagine what we're going to be next. And I know we've talked about this as we were going through filming the Summer of Love and stuff. I just, in the very depth of my beingness, I sense that we are in the imaginal cell stage. We're just all coming together. It's getting more and more exciting. I can feel the vision becoming clearer and clearer. I can't see it at all. I'm not pretending I can't, but I can feel it. I can feel the cells are congealing, if you will, and coming together. And it's all because of our sharing these stories with one another until we hear that thing that resonates us and the light goes off. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay, I got it. And it's a calm and comfort and confidence when we do and, and when we recognize that we are exactly where we're supposed to be, that we have a reason for being here that is our very own, that no one else ever even has to know. They're never going to understand. We're not going to fully understand it. But as we learn to listen to our heart and follow it, we'll simply know that we're doing exactly what we're meant to be doing here. And being the you social, ultra social creature that we are, we are wired to care when we evolve to the complex emotions that we have that put us over the line into being like an ant and a termite and a bee whose lives are here to serve the super organism of their greater group. And it's evidenced in infinite ways all around us. And just look at, look at how we care, how we, how we ooh and ah over a baby and a puppy. This is the way that we were born to be. So the more that we express that love and embody it, the more we are living our true lives that we were meant to be living, and the less we're resisting what we were born to be anyway. And so the process of conscious evolution is as much about becoming who and what we are as it is changing into something else. But we will very likely see great change in our lifestyle, our culture, our way of living, our way of being, our way of interacting and engaging with ourselves, our environment, each other, and, and the greater planet and, and the group of the human family. So it's an exciting time to be alive and be aware of all this and, and be in touch with and networking with all the wonderful people in these alternative culture movements that we are, from the love movement to the counterculture and everything in between. And, and I just want to give this shout out right now to anyone who proclaims themselves or feels inside maybe they were born or destined to be a change maker or an influencer or a new ager, or an indigo child, or be the change, or a light worker, or a crystal <laughs> angel. If you feel like you're meant to be doing more, reach out, 
reach out, build community and get support for that. Proclaim yourself change maker and seeker and embody it, fulfill it. Read Field Guide to a New Species. It's very brief. Listen to our audiobook narration of the book and let it sink in. Pick a couple random areas, turn to any page, the interface of ethics and society, our voice in the world, and look at how our voice in the world evolves from the unaware, unconscious homo sapien that we've been raised to be culturally through the rebel who can't believe we'd be so self-harmful and to ourselves and each other, to the seeker who has gotten through the anger and frustration over our situation and is just striving to find solutions and better ways through and ways to contribute to the homo veritas evolved human who is absolutely living it and confident in the way they are living it, realizing that we are here to contribute and participate in our role as a function of a superorganism of our human family. And the exciting thing for me, and I want to you know, help people feel empowered, was when we did the um, Earth Day event, we just walked around and we asked people about conscious evolution. Now, admittedly, people didn't know what conscious evolution was, the vast majority, but when we asked them to describe what conscious evolution might look like or an action of conscious evolution, boy, did they know what it was. And so many of them were already doing things that aligned with conscious evolution and they lit up when you said, well, you're doing it. And you're like, oh my God, not empowerment. So don't overthink this. Like I said in the beginning, this isn't complicated. Another thing that's really important for us, letting go of ego, letting go of fear is so important, moving beyond judgment into acceptance. Our judgment and our anthropomorphization of the functions of nature and life's process in the universe and our fear of it, mm -hmm. it it's been just, um, it's imprisoned us. It's, in, it's imprisoned us in, in the way that we interact with one another. It's imprisoned us in the way that we interact with the larger world around us. We need to move beyond judgment. And when what I say, what I mean by that is, you'll hear people say, well, this isn't a very loving world. This isn't love. No, everything is love. It can't not be. Everything is love. So when you look around yourself and you're like, well, that's not love. It's love doing exactly what you're asking. It's love being exactly what you're putting your energy in love being. Love doesn't judge. Love isn't going, well, I, I don't know. You want to have a war? It's just a story. There's no judgment there. Okay, then I guess we'll have a war. That's what you want. That's what you're deciding to create. That's what you're deciding to manifest in the world. This is what it really comes to the, at the heart of conscious evolution. is our conscious manifestation, creation of the life that we want to have, of collectively how we want to exist in the larger story that we are innately a part of. And I just realized something very interesting about war. It is one of the grandest and most effective, successful examples of humans coming together and working <laughs> on the same thing, accomplishing the same thing, albeit the destruction of the enemy, the perceived enemy <laughs> in the story. But how ironic that we are most successful at destroying things like if that energy were channeled in the direction of co-creation, as Barbara points out, the, the choice between code destruction and, and co-creation, wow, now just imagine the possibilities. And that, if nothing else, is what Soul Perspectives is here for. Opening our minds, sharing a perspective that may help you to expand your own and find ways to make your own inroads to consciously evolve and to inspire those around you so that each of us, cultural creatives, imaginal cells, can link up together, truly be this change and co-create this world in which we want to live that honors our heart's desire to thrive. And you're saying something that's so important, but let's, let's make it really clear to people. Us talking to you we're not the ones doing this for you or to you or, or however you want to look at it. We're not your gurus. You've invited us. This is the inner you saying, I'm ready to awaken. I'm ready to become in line. I'm ready to consciously evolve. This is you talking to you. It's not us telling you anything. 
Everything is up to you. It's all inside you. We all have the power to be whatever we want to be. It's, but, and we all have our, the power to be our own savior, our own messiah, our own guru. It's all up to you right now. We're sharing this with you because you've asked us to. And we're grateful for the opportunity to do that. We are bringing love to you right through your screen. Because, <laughs> because two, three, four. It's, it's all, all a matter of perception. Where we stand in space and time. There is no you or me that I can see. Only delusions of the mind. We'll see you next Thursday on Soul Perspectives. Please like, comment, share, and do all the usual stuff. Subscribe to our channels, Soul Documentary, all over the internet. And join our mailing list at souldocumentary.love because we need love too. We love you. We'll see you next week. <laughs>